And our special guest right now is Angela Persicky. She is a board certified behavior mm -hmm. analyst and she has brought some really interesting mm -hmm. research in to talk with us about, about unusual fears. Unusual fears among children with autism. So a recent study was released uh, uh, looking at the prevalence of unusual fears, so um, to, you know, odd things such as mechanics, toilets, mm -hmm. um, weather conditions like not thunderstorms but wind and mm -hmm. just these um, odd fears or fears that are um, uh, exaggerated yeah. in some sense. So uh, maybe the child has a fear of dogs, but it's so exaggerated the child won't even go outside. Yeah. Uh, so that's what they're talking about, unusual fears. And they found, um, which is something that we've talked about for a long time, oh, children with autism have these unusual fears, but no one's actually really looked at the prevalence rates. Okay. And it's about 40% wow. of children uh, on the autism spectrum have these unusual fears. And this is compared to about 5% in the typical population. Really? Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And and in terms of the research, do we know why? No, there's not. Uh, there are a couple theories um, having to do with the hypersensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, there may be specific sensory issues, uh, something in the environment mm -hmm. uh, that we don't necessarily attend to mm -hmm. that the child is. So, um, you know, with with wind, uh, being afraid of wind, and mm -hmm. uh, there might be something with the way it feels mm -hmm. that uh, is affecting that. But also, uh, some of these uh, children would give explanations for why they're afraid, and um, they're they're irrational, actually. So it's like being blown away by the wind, mm -hmm. uh, which you know I can kind of see where they may have been watching a TV show mm -hmm. and seen this happen, like, you know, in a cartoon, the wind blows the cartoon character away, uh, and this just uh, becomes an irrational fear, and mm -hmm. the child starts perseverating on it, right. just like in any other situation, and uh, this is just m way more common in children with autism than the typical population. Well, we certainly are in the 40% mm -hmm. um, in my house, and, and I'm interested to know, I don't know what how big of a scope the research uh, covers, but I'm interested to know from other parents, and maybe if people want to write in if their children have this, if they cycle in and out of it. Because mm -hmm. I think with, uh, with our son, and if I'm going to be honest, this is true of me as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm somebody who will cycle in and out of different anxiety things where mm -hmm. something cannot bother me for a long time and then bother me all of a sudden. I don't know why. Um, but my child will be fine and, and not have an issue. And then all of a sudden we go back to an irrational fear from when he was little. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fascinating mm -hmm. to me, like how that cycles in and out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but again, if I'm honest, I would say that that's true of me as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so do they, do they, they look at, they did not address that. They, um, were specifically looking at the, the types of fears and, uh, uh, the percentage of children they they uh, had reports from over a thousand children. Wow, um, it's a pretty big study. Yeah, and it's a huge study, and sh and showing that about forty percent have these uh, unusual fears. But also, uh, if you include just typical fears, mm -hmm. so of um, you know specific animals, snakes, spiders, bugs, right. um, something like that, it goes to over fifty percent. So. Uh, okay. But unusual fears alone are just the 40%. 40%. But they didn't look at uh, cycling back around. Uh, okay. They were just mentioning it within this uh, sample. Right. These were the... Uh, the prevalence rates. Well, I, I know that you work with the Autism Research mm -hmm. Group and that you, you frequently ask mm -hmm. uh, your, you know, uh, the parents, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying yep. to say, the parents <laughs> that uh, that you yep. serve, mm -hmm. what kinds of things would you like more research mm -hmm. on? And I know a lot of people write in about anxiety and mm -hmm. uh, I'm just checking to see um, what somebody has written here. Um, but, uh, okay, uh, it's, one of the things that I would be interested in knowing, mm -hmm. furthering this, is if anybody else cycles through it, but also mm -hmm. what the parents say about their level of anxiety. Yeah, I would like to see that too. Um, I mean, among the um, the autism population, it's a, for anxieties alone, it's yeah. very high, about 90% yeah. um, of children have anxieties for yeah. some reason or another. And uh, you may see more... Um, Anxi anxious behaviors among children who have anxious parents. Yeah. Um, not necessarily that that is um, 
passed on, but the child will pick up on yeah. those types of behaviors and, and learn from those behaviors. Yeah, I always mm -hmm. want to say that, you know, uh, I'm always talking about, well, we need to model good behavior, mm -hmm. and we need to, but I, I forget how much of my behavior mm -hmm. my son picks up, and exactly. I don't know whether it's because mm -hmm. uh, I'm just that way, that I don't realize it, or if it's part of it is because he had autism for so long, I didn't think he was picking mm -hmm. things up. Mm -hmm. Like, I think most parents, uh, I am somebody who is very capable of having a very bad potty mouth. <laughs> and um, and I think that most parents at a certain point when their child is acquiring language stop that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, I, my husband doesn't have a potty mouth. I do. Uh, I didn't. And so yeah. one day when my son was acquiring language, when mm -hmm. he said words and I went, oh my goodness, I'm listening. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and I, I've, I've been aware in recent years of trying to make sure how I language certain things around mm -hmm. my child so that he doesn't pick up when I talk about anxiety and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and But just the other day, he said uh, mm -hmm. we were doing something outside, and it was very hot. It's mm -hmm. been very hot here until the last couple of days. And he said, oh, I think I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> And I said, mm, where has he gotten this conversation? Where, where has he picked up these terms? How has this happened? Um, so, of course, mm -hmm. he's picking up things for me. Yeah, and even if, um, I mean, and this is probably a misconception um, among a lot of people with children um, on the spectrum, is that they don't understand a lot. Mm -hmm. But maybe the, the child isn't picking up on a lot of the social cues or um, um, language that you use. But there are other behaviors your child will, will pick up on. Yeah. And uh, it's not that the child is just in his own world and does, yeah. is oblivious to everything. You'll be amazed at what <laughs> yeah. children pick up. And uh, even a child who has no language will pick up yeah. on your own behaviors and yeah. learn those behaviors from you. So, uh, you know, if you are uh, more anxious in situations, mm -hmm. especially when we were talking about going to play dates, if you're going yeah. to a play date and you're very anxious and uh, the child will will see that, yeah. will learn that. And I don't think it's just our kids. I mean, having been a, a teacher and and worked in the public school system, mm -hmm. ask any teacher oh, yeah. about what happens the, the couple of days before a lengthy vacation mm -hmm. or what happens around different times of the year, like tax time when the parents are more stressed. Mm -hmm. It vibrates in the children. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. You can touch it. It mm -hmm. vibrates in them. Um, so I think they're all little magnets that yeah. they pick up things. Oh, definitely. Like, but including but, our kids on the spectrum. Uh -huh. And um, the fears, um, though, obviously, um, these are intensified in some way. And mm -hmm. and that's what they're getting at, is that this is something we we probably knew for a very long time, but no research has really done a large-scale study right. to, to support um, these prevalence rates. Um, one, of the, the, one of their findings is that... Um, Fear of toilets was one of the mm. the highest fears, which could easily be why it takes you know a little bit longer time mm -hmm. for toileting to happen. That's what I was thinking um, when reading this. They didn't they didn't allude to that in the study, but I was just thinking with all of our children who um, you know it may be really difficult to even get the kid into the bathroom. Yeah. Um, this fear of toilets, and it could um, it could be many factors having to do with um, you know the, the sitting on a cold right <laughs> cold. Right. Toilet or uh, to the sound that the flush makes, you know, right. anything. It's a or lot. the fact that stuff disappears. Exactly. It's like a magic trick. So, yeah. It's a portal to <laughs> heaven knows what, you uh -huh. know. Stuff yeah. goes away and so it doesn't there, come back. Exactly. There are a lot of factors involved um, that make these fears. They maybe uh, we would consider them irrational, but there, there, there is something in the child's environment yeah. that is facilitating this fear response. Yeah, and even in the irrationality, I think usually if it's, if somebody can um, voice it, there's mm -hmm. some element mm -hmm. of rational to it. One of the things that we're dealing with right now, <clears throat> my son has always been fascinated with drains, always. Mm -hmm. There's something about the whole thing with drains, even when he was little, little, thought they were, you know, would perseverate on them. Um, but he will cycle in and out of when the water goes out of the bathtub. Mm. You know, there's sometimes he's totally willing to be in the bathtub and there's no big deal. And other times he has to be out of the tub every possible. He takes baths with tons of mm -hmm. Legos. Every Lego has to be out of the bathtub. Yeah. And it's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this week, it's a big, big deal again when it hasn't been for over a 
year. Mm -hmm. And I stood there in the bathroom with him and I said, honey, what is it you, what is it you're afraid is going to happen? Do you think that you're going to get sucked down the drain? Look at how big you are. Look at the size of the drain. Mm -hmm. It can't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think when he was little, he was afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, even though I'm standing there and saying it to the nine year old who gets it, mm -hmm. that he's too big, mm -hmm. he said to me, well, there was that one time when a toy went down the drain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was that one time mm -hmm. when a toy went down the drain and I can't even believe that he remembers yeah. that. And then, and to him, that toy is gone forever. And it is. <laughs> so. It is gone forever. Mm -hmm. And I finally, the other night said, you know what? I will replace that toy mm -hmm. uh, because we never did. Oh, I yeah. said, I will replace that toy, but then we have to move on. And not only that, I'm going to get you four because mm -hmm. it was just a, a certain Lego piece. And I said, you have all the, he said, those are hard to come by, Mom. Yes. And I said, okay, I will replace, <laughs> I will get you four of that Lego toy, but I want you to realize that it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. It's not forever. It's not and gone it, forever. <laughs> yeah. And on the realm of it's replaceable mm -hmm. and you can't go down the drain. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about this anymore. And I don't, you know, I need to get that Lego piece this week. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, and then I'll see, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just odd to me that we're back to, to that. Yeah, this that week. is interesting. And I don't know if uh, any research has specifically looked at that. Uh, yeah. uh, nothing that I've come across has looked into that. So, um, but you know, there are just, it could have not happened for a really long time. And then um, he's playing with his Legos again and remembers this one occasion. And yeah. then that brings up the whole fear response again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think too, it's the time of the year. There's a lot of, I, I think that other things trigger it. They're, everywhere we go now, there's the ghouls and the goblins yep. and the people. Mm -hmm. I don't know when Halloween got so bloody. Where are the witches and the pumpkins? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's so you can't go into a regular. You can't mm -hmm. go into the grocery store that there's not something with fangs that's mm -hmm. chewing something dead. Yep, exactly. Oh. Especially this time of year, and you're gonna going to have a lot of trick or treaters coming to your door in these really crazy, scary costumes. Yeah. I can imagine this is a very stressful time of the year. For yeah, a just lot of walking down mm -hmm. the aisle in a store, it, it you know and. And, uh, and he knows it's not real, but sometimes somebody jumps out yep. and that's all you need is mm -hmm. one. We went one to time. one Halloween mm -hmm. store last year where somebody jumped out and I said, really? Mm -hmm. Like, really? And uh, the thing How is with, with fear <laughs> responding to, uh, there are other factors that could be associated. So mm -hmm. um, if that person jumped out and then, um, you know, uh, was wearing a bunny ears, uh, right. the child could develop this fear of rabbits, yeah. which uh, there are all these factors that are involved and it does. It takes one. Well, and I feel like you know, the one thing happens that uh, like flips the switch mm -hmm. and then everything that he's ever been afraid of, he's afraid of in that yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you go, really, we're going to go back to the two year old fear of look at you, mm -hmm. look at the size of you. You're not going down the drain. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, and actually there was a cartoon that he watched that had a little scientist that the guy was shrunk and he went down the drain. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, you know, we do yeah. what we can. But great, interesting research. Thank Very you for sharing that with us. And we'll look forward to hearing, you know, what happens as a result of it. Mm -hmm. I always find research fascinating. It's like, oh, okay, we know that now what are we going to do with next that? Next step. What yeah. are the next steps? Yeah, what are the next steps? Okay. <laughs>